FM 96.5 KVEC. We have uh, been talking with Karen Veely from Cal Coast News. We've been talking about Adam Hill and Helios Dayspring and Heidi Harmon and Nick Andre and Quinn Brady, Corey Black, some other names might come up here. As we're back with you, Karen, but on Helios Dayspring, he's facing prison. He could go to prison for, for a while. Well, they have, they have offered him a very short, he can't go more than 13 years. I am still talking to some people that work with Helios. They are telling me that he has bragged that he is going to do no more than three or four years and come out stronger than he ever has been. Hmm. His fingerprints, it, go ahead. Well, you go, you go ahead. I go. No, I was just going to say his fingerprints are everywhere in terms of what's been happening in Grover and what's in San Luis Obispo in terms of cannabis. He has a lot of influence. He, he doesn't just have influence. I believe he has ownership of many properties. When I first started looking at Helios, I was told that he owned a property in a Tascadero, but he had it in neighbor's name. And that is one of the things that he regularly does. He puts, not a neighbor's name, in a worker's name. And the property will end up in the worker's name, and then after a year or two, it's transferred, transferred to an LLC that is owned by Helios. And I was told by his employees that he was um, very, um, he wanted to be part of every marijuana property um, and shop in the county. And I believe he is involved in probably the vast majority of them. But if this is true, then what keeps the FBI from coming back to him? Well, I, right now, if he wills Dayspring, lies to the FBI, or gives them false information, or doesn't know something, doesn't tell them, they can go after much more time in jail. And um, right now, he has a very, I think he has a very, um, a sweetheart deal. I also just, I just um, it hasn't come out in reporting yet, but I just want to emphasize that many people believe that this is more than just about cannabis, that it also involves developers. I believe it does. I was speak, speaking with an official in San Luis Obispo County who told me that they believed, or that, they, that the search warrant wasn't just about Helios Day Spring and cannabis, it was about two developers. I also know a former city councilman in the city of Slough who told me he talked to the, the FBI and they were also looking at the airport land use issues. All right, if you want in on this conversation with Karen, uh, we welcome your phone calls, 805-543-8830 or 800-549-5832. On the Stahlberg line, uh, listener writes, uh, Dayspring's actions and... Hmm, I'm trying to figure out this sentence. Uh, Dayspring's action and influence Hood Diamond Cannabis direct out of business. Diamond ca uh, put di uh, Hood Diamond Cannabis directly out of business. Do you think about that, Karen? Absolutely. Um, first, um, Sean Despain, who was a source that I didn't name at the time, but when I used to interview him regularly, he had worked for Helios and he had his own um, marijuana business. I asked him once, has Helios ever threatened to harm or kill anyone? And he told me the only time he seriously considered hiring a hitman to kill someone was the guy that owned Diamond Cannabis because he considered him his biggest competitor. And then the, 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 they have a legal um, grow in a warehouse that isn't bothering, it's, it's, it's not smelling from outside. It's out in a very rural area outside of Arroyo Grande in the county, it's been approved. And he asked to rent the other another um, warehouse area. 
He goes in and he puts, I was told, just a couple plants to see if the sun would hit him. It ended up in a raid and him losing his business. And there are allegations that Helios helped this raid happen. I don't know if that's true or not, but the allegations are out there. And also, this has been mentioned before, but I want to hear it from you directly. When Heidi Harmon was mayor, the allegation is she would make regular visits to the Grover Beach cannabis dispensaries? Yes, yes. And if you, I, I, I can't remember the title of the story, but I did a story years ago showing photos of the upstairs. I, it, it's bonds on the ground, um, marijuana things opened up, laying everywhere. It's pretty well trashed. And employees there told me that she was a regular visitor and would go upstairs and party with Helios. They also told me, and I had multiple people confirm this, that at one point before the vote, he told them to give her about $1,000, two bags of free cannabis projects, products before she left. All right, uh, Karen Veely is with us from CalCoastNews.com. To the phones we go. We start with Dane on KVEC. Hi, Dane. Hi, Dave. Hi, Karen. Hi. A couple, couple things. Um, when you're worth millions, you can throw a lot of money around and corrupt a lot of people. And I think for the most part, when he says, I'm not going to spend three more than three years, he's probably absolutely right. This, this, this county is, is loaded with corruption and it's been paid off. I think the 32,000 he gave Adam Hill was just a tip of the iceberg. That was that was just part of the money. I'm sure he gave him a lot more and a lot of other people. Second thing, uh, Karen, you mentioned in one of your articles that not only did ha ha um, uh, Mayor Harmon uh, resign, but Susie Walsh, the detective from Slow Police, and Ginger Garrett in the same, ar in the same article. Does that have any connection or suspicion of uh, this uh, pot industry too? What about Susie Walsh, Karen? Let's start there. I was told by a partner of Helios's that Susie Walsh didn't ask them hardly any questions. It was a done deal before they met with her. I was told there was a, um, and I can't think of the name right now. There was a, there was a cannabis company selected, not Floco, not the one that did win, the third one. And this one, was pushed out because Susie Walsh interviewed them. Now this is a, a police officer, not a businesswoman. And she, she wrote, I was a, a city employee, shared with me some of her report. And it was things like they met to sign the contract um, at a coffee shop and they signed it at seven o'clock at night in the dark of night. It was like, so what? That doesn't matter, and a minority partner with three or four percent generally doesn't know all the operating procedures. And that was one of the reasons this project was it was after it won because it it won the it met the criteria the best. It was taken out, and this gentleman told me he didn't have any clue how this thing was run or those questions, but it didn't matter for him. And that you know, Susie Walsh was on their side. Hmm. So there were allegations of corruption with Susie Walsh. And would you know anything with certainty about Judge Garrett because she resigned abruptly? Anything there, Karen? I, I have been told by several people in the marijuana business. One of them is was an owner of one of the other pot shops in Grover Beach. They explained to me that they let Helios have a... Uh, percentage ownership and the reason they did that was because Helios had bragged that he had two judges on the tape. Do I know that's true? Absolutely not. All right, let's leave it at that. Dane, what else from you? Well, all I can say is uh, look at how many wonderful things the pot industry has brought to San Luis County. I'm glad you called, Dane. Thank you very much. We've got Michael in San Simeon. Hi, Michael. Yes, Karen. Uh, Thanks, and Dave, thanks for taking my call. Sure. Uh, Karen, you've written extensively about the corruption going on in San Simeon with the general manager 
uh, essentially managing his own company, Grace Environmental Services. And I, I really want to thank you for that. Uh, what, what I want, I would really like to see uh, an in-depth in why this has been able to happen, uh, basically uh, having a lot to do with the board being 100% appointed people and none of the board ever facing a contested election. Here we have only 192 registered voters. We have democracy basically on life support and it's now facing redistricting. Right. So here we have board members that live in the same condominium. Pro right. Pro right. We have an open seat. Uh, Michael, let her talk. Of Michael, let her talk. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've waited three years for this. Karen, go ahead. <laughs> Michael, I do agree there are major problems in San Simeon. Um, I don't know what the answer is. I've heard from some residents that do want the county to take it over, um, but believe the supervisor is um, not wanting to do that. I don't know if a new supervisor would help you or hurt you. Michael, what else? Yes, we're in a big uh, quandary, a big conundrum. Uh, I don't see any easy way forward, uh, but it would help to put some daylight on uh, the redistricting, how that's really going to be the death knell of democracy, at least with our service district in San Simeon. All right, Michael, thank you for calling. Do you share those concerns, Karen? I, I know that there is problems with corruption and especially in the, in the community services districts because they are so small and they seem to go unnoticed. I don't know if the corruption is caused by the supervisor that's there. I don't believe it. I do not believe the supervisor involved is causing the corruption. But if, if there are a number of people there that would like to join the county, and, and I don't know if a new supervisor would be more likely to want to do that, or not. Right. But I don't think that the redistricting is the primary problem with San Simeon. We got Nicole in Los Osos on KVEC. Hi, Nicole. Hi, how are you? We're good. What's up? Um, I I hadn't um, heard her say anything yet about the judge who suddenly retired. Is that related at all? Do you know? Well, we were just talking about that Judge Garrett. What do you know? Yes. Nicole, what do you know? What have you heard? Um, nothing. I just thought it was you know, the timing was suspect. Karen, what are you comfortable saying about Judge Garrett? Well, I will say that she did have a number of Helios's cases, and she ruled very favorably for Helios. Um, and, what, and this includes allegations of corruption in the permitting process in Morro Bay. So the, the, um, I don't know why she stepped down. There are a number of theories out there, but I think it's just uh, we're going to have to wait and see what, what yeah. happens. Right. Yeah, I just thought the timing was suspect because Heidi retired around the same time. So, you know, I just did a Google search of her name and Helios Dayspring, and that's, you know, she definitely popped up all over his cases. Yeah, interesting. All right, Nicole, thank you. Do we know if Judge Garrett was at the big Helios Dayspring Confab, where he had all the local candidates. Do you know? I have not heard that. Okay. I have not heard that. All uh, right, Maureen's in San Luis. Hi, Maureen. Hi, Dave. Hi, Maureen. Hi, Hi, Karen. I talked to you a couple of weeks ago, and I sent you uh, a letter with um, uh, pictures of a couple that um, having a building nightmare, and um, and uh, they were on Dave's show. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I really would love you to listen to his podcast, um, 10:27 at 5 p.m. Uh, slot. Karen's, um, a, Karen's aware of it. This is about Dennis Moresco. Yes, yes, yes. And, uh, and I and I I do plan on looking into it. I have um, been a bit buried in the last couple of months. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I know, I know. I just wanted to, the corruption is, is pot, but it's also the building industry. Well, and you said yeah. that, and, and this couple talked about the county inspectors also, just like you talked about it tonight. So yeah. you, you're, all, you're aware of it then. Okay, 
<laughs> All right, Maureen. That's great. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thank you. And I, I want to come back to that idea, Karen, before I take the next call, is that there's cannabis and then there's uh, developers. And in my mind, just my, and I know nothing other than what you tell me, the connection seemed to be the late Adam Hill because this stuff was going down in District 3. Who, who, what, what do developers and cannabis people have in common? They got Adam Hill. Or am I being unfair? There are multiple developers that have told me that they were threatened by Adam Hill for different things. You support me, you don't talk to that person, um, you don't do business to that person. Adam Hill um, was a bit of a boy. Uh, but there are, there are allegations. I've done a number of stories on Pettit and Belcher, and there were a number of allegations that there was a, um, that he was financially rewarded for his work in that case also. All right, uh, Jeff is in San Luis. Hi, Jeff. Hi, how Hi. are you folks this evening? Never better. Nice to hear that. Karen, uh, it's really nice to see that you're back on Dave's program again. Congratulations. And Thank you. I'm very, very excited to be back on. She, she had to give me $1,000 in free cannabis. <laughs> oh, well, hey, all right. That's, uh, that's great. Uh, there's, uh, number one, thank you so much for your fight against corruption and this incredibly dangerous work that you do that I'm sure most people don't realize. And I have a question about, we never hear anything anymore about Aaron Gomez, retired city councilman Aaron Gomez. Rumor has it he's growing pot now. And uh, also uh, Christine Dietrich, with everything that's gone on, is there any chance that she didn't know about all of this a long time ago? Well, those are two questions there. Let's break them down. What do you know about Aaron Gomez, if anything, Karen? I, I have heard that he is, might have a cannabis grow, but I have not confirmed it. Right. And what about Christine Dietrich? Is she asleep at the wheel? Um, the, the interesting thing about Christine Dietrich is as all this was going down, she became very untransparent. Um, they fought me on records repeatedly. And I do believe um, that, that, that that promotes corruption. When you will not let the press read over documents with different claims, it really helps promote corruption and wrongdoing. All right, uh, Jeff, thanks for the question. Program note, Karen is going to stick with us into the 6 o'clock hour for a while. Amber's in Morro Bay. Hi, Amber.